In this tutorial, we're going to make a basic relationship between two tables. We have a product table, and it has a primary key of machine ID, and we have a supplier table, which is a very basic table, with a primary key of supplier ID, and just a couple of fields, supplier name and county. At the moment, there is no relationship existing between the product and supplier tables, and there's no common field. Without a common field, you can't create a relationship. I'm going to close the relationship view and I'm going to open up my product table. So this is my product table in datasheet view. This is where I enter the information in. I'm going to switch to design view. And I'm going to add in a new field just at the end for supplier information. I'm going to call it supplier ID just because that's the name of the corresponding field in the other table. And my data type for supplier ID is going to be a lookup wizard. The lookup wizard gives me two options. It gives me the option to type in the values that I want or select a table that I want to link to. And I'm going to link to a table. The advantage of linking to a table is if you add new records to the table, those records will automatically appear in the drop down list. The table that I want to link to is the supplier table. And the fields that I want to include in my drop-down list or in my relationship are the supplier ID and the supplier name. The supplier ID is the field that uniquely identifies each record and the supplier name is the field that has some meaningful information from the user's perspective. I'm going to sort the information and I'm going to sort it by supplier name in ascending order. If I want to change the descending order, then I just click on the box and it changes to descending. I now have the choice whether to hide or show the key column. That is the primary key in this case. If I show it, you'll see that it is just the supplier ID. This value is an auto number and has no real usefulness from the user's perspective. So in terms of the drop down list, there's no reason why it should show. The meaningful information is the supplier name. So I'm going to resize this and you can resize by clicking and dragging when you see that vertical bar with the two arrows or you can double click and it will automatically resize. So you can see clearly the names of the suppliers. In the last step of the wizard, you can name your lookup field. I'm going to leave the default name on. Um, the names really only matter if you're going to be programming, if you're going to look at the visual basic behind the code and modify it, then you need to have unique identifiers for your lists. So I'm going to choose finish and access will prompt me to save it. So it's now saved with the relationship. If I close this table and then view my relationships, so database tools and relationships, I can see that a re relationship exists between the two tables, the product table and the supplier table. The relationship is based on a common field, that is the supplier ID. It's the primary key of the supplier table, and it's now a foreign key in the product table. That is a primary key that is a known key entity. So that's facilitating the relationship. This relationship at the moment is undefined. So I'm going to double click on this line and I'm going to enforce referential integrity. This will allow me to have a one-to-many relationship between these two tables, which means that each supplier can supply many products, but each product can only come from one supplier. And enforce refer referential integrity basically means if at some point I try and delete a supplier, access will prevent me from doing that if a product exists that comes from that supplier. So the relationship has now been created. You can see that it's one to many using the, the one and the infinity symbol. I'm now going to close my relationships and go into my product table. And now when I move across, I can see supplier ID. And when I click on supplier ID, I have three options to choose from. And those are the three records in my supplier table. So I'm going to choose one for each of the products. And 
and now it's set up to easily enter new suppliers. So if I close that and add a new supplier in my supplier table, So Dave's Coffee Supplies, based in Armour. I'm now going to close this table, so that's my supplier table with an extra field, or an extra record, sorry, added in. Go back to my product table, and if I now scroll across to the supplier information, you can see that there are now four records, and they're in alphabetical order. So even though Dave's Coffee Supplies was added in as the last record, it's at the top of the list, because when I created the relationship, I put those items in alphabetical order.